Well, Thomas Straker is one of those modern-day celebrity chefs and somebody that uses TikTok and, 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 and Facebook and Twitter um, and, and all of these social media channels to push what he does. And, in fact, butter has been one of his great things, how to make really tasty butter. And one of those videos had 25 million views, so Thomas Straker is very well known. He has opened up a new restaurant in London, an ambitious new restaurant in London. And I'm going to show you a picture of the new team that he's going to work with. And there they are, there's eight of them, and they're the people he trusts to work with him with Straker's, his new restaurant. Well, there is outrage about this, because they're all white and they're all men, and this is seen to be a terrible thing. You know, we know that freedom of speech is under attack, uh, but actually I begin to think that freedom of association is under attack. Who we can talk to, who we can socialise with, who we can speak to. In response to this outrage, Thomas Straker has said, honestly, people need to calm down. Firstly, there is a shortage of chefs, hospitality workers, which is true. Secondly, if you feel so passionately, please go and gather CVs for any chefs that you think we're missing in the team. I want solutions, not problems. Thank you. Well, I find the whole thing pretty extraordinary. I'm very pleased to be joined for the second time on this programme by Cyrus Tony Waller, OBE, Deputy Lieutenant, very distinguished, successful restaurateur with Café Spice. So simply... You know, I, I don't know how many Indian restaurants there are in the country, many thousands. If I went into the kitchens, how many white people would I see in there? Maybe 0.5% at <laughs> best. Um, and how many women would I see in those kitchens? Well, you would, you would not see, mostly you would not see white people in our kitchens. In some restaurants, yes. Yep. There is, uh, even though you try and encourage as much as you can to attract them, it's not seen as somebody who is ca capable or not capable, rather, or compatible with the cuisine, the history, the taste, etc., etc., etc. I mean, you've come to this country, you've settled in this country, yep. you've grown to love this country and been enthusiasts for it, and we spoke about that before when you were on the programme. What it, what's wrong with us? Because why is this guy Straker getting so much stick? Why would Indian restaurateurs not get the same level of stick? Is there some sort of self-hatred about the British? I, I, I think we have become too righteous in many respects because today the industry faces a massive skills shortage. Yeah. We are in a very critical situation, not just in modern British, French, Italian restaurants, across the board of hospitality in Britain, we have huge skills shortages. If Thomas has a <clears throat> requirement for a particular skill, he, I don't think, is racist enough to say, no, I don't want somebody coloured. All he wants was people that can deliver the menu that he's going to create. And people that he knows, and people yeah. that he trusts. Absolutely. And it's expensive, isn't it? You know, hell of a financial risk setting up a new restaurant. Now, I find, the, I find the abuse extraordinary. But there is one thing, Cyrus. It does seem, and I'm probably going to get condemned for this, but it does seem there are far fewer women that want to be professional chefs than men. There is a growing, uh, there is a growing uh, percentage of uh, young girls, young ladies joining hospitality associations and schools. Yeah. Okay. We see them because we run a competition and this year's team was all girl team that won from University of West London. Okay. I, we have tried very hard to promote Asian cuisine across the British diaspora so that we can have young British-born budding chefs look at Asian cuisines also. And you've been training people, haven't you? I've been training them for years. Yes. Yes. Years. It's not, it, and slowly but gradually, things are falling into place. Girls are being accepted quite easily. Interesting. Okay. I know kitchens where the women are bosses and they do an extremely good job. How far they stay with the industry and how far, if they get married, they get children, and how they make that work-life balance work is where the critical question always has been for yeah. ladies. Yeah. But by and large, I think it's growing. We have a massive shortage of pastry chefs in this country. They are like gold dust. And uh, young girls are taking up more pastry. So why the shortage? I don't understand this. Why, is, why do so, or not enough, young people want to become chefs, want to go into hospitality? There are lots of issues. I think for, for one, in the past, if you look at it, the industry has an ill reputation. In one sense, it was perceived to be poor pay scales, long working hours, you work on weekends. The youth today are slightly different though. We never minded working our weekends. They do want time off. But that's, you work in this industry to make people happy. 
When people go out, you've got to be serving them. That's, that's our job. But what has happened is the industry has changed, but that has not uh, penetrated down. Mm. Parents still feel that the industry is very poor paying. Yeah. The reciprocation for the number of hours put into the job are not... <clears throat> so not good enough. Basically, the young people don't want to work hard anymore. No, we have a we uh, we have a sort of a reputation, a sort of an image that needs to be eradicated. Mm. The industry tries very hard. There are lots of there are lots of associations that are trying very hard to encourage young people to join the industry, mm. but it's a very slow process, a slow battle. If, if I'm going out for a meal, I'm going out for an Indian or whatever yep. it may be. Um, one of the things that will accompany my meal will be a glass of something. And that, of course, today has just become a lot more expensive, hasn't 100% it? percent has. You know, I mean, are, is the industry seeing the cost of living impacting? The industry is, see, is seeing many cost increases. So, like in Thomas's brigade, every other brigade, because manpower is short, it's at a premium. Yeah. So there is a lot of poaching going on. Yeah. And people are offering silly money for chefs to join their brigades. They are, on the other hand, the cost of every single bit of raw materials escalated from meat prices to vegetable uh, prices to yeah. oils yeah. to yeah. everything. Yeah. It's just gone out of bounds. You cannot input that into your menu because there is a limit to which people will want to pay hmm. for a constant increment on the menu because it's almost constant. It's not one day that you see the price stay steady for a month. It's not happening anymore. No. It's constantly no. on a wave. It's tough. Everything's getting very expensive. Cyrus, thank you for coming. It's a pleasure. Thank me. you very much. Always, always plain spoken. There's never any confusion about what you think, is there? Should not be. No, well, there never is. The questions are very straight. I shouldn't <laughs> well, be. Well, I hope so. <laughs>